Now I will go to the second part of the uh, presentation, which is on sonisamide. As I said, uh, sonisamide is a daily dosing uh, anti epileptic drug. So there are a few benefits. Firstly, sonisamide is not that new. It has been used in Japan for many years, but only available in Malaysia uh, lately in the past uh, almost 10 years. Sonisamide, therefore, was not classified as a third generation, which is here, but only second generation uh, anti epileptic drugs. But the main things I want to highlight of sonisamide is that it, it has a multiple mechanism of actions. And you can see it's involving the sodium channel, the calcium channel, as well as carbonic and hydrase inhibitors. If you compare to top pyramids, it is very similar. Topiramates has almost similar uh, mechanism of actions as sonisamide, as what uh, I have highlighted here. And the benefit of multiple mechanism is that it can be used in various uh, seizure types. In this uh, chart, what we can see on the top are the seizure types, which include epsilon seizures, myoclonic epilepsy seizures, generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Uh, this is complex partial seizures. Now we call them focal impaired awareness uh, seizures, or focal impaired awareness seizures, or focal aware seizures. Or in the past, we call them simple partial seizures. And you can see that for carbamazepine and phenytoin, they can only be used on certain seizure types, especially the focal seizures as well as generalized tonic clonic seizures. If we use carbamazepine in myoclonic uh, seizures, it may aggravate the myoclonic jets. So only a few uh, medications can be used for both focal as well as generalized uh, seizures, including the older one like you know, bulb, sodium bulb plates. And sonisamide is here, which can be used for myoclonic jets and some even use it for epsilon seizures as well. In, this is the Lancet Neurology uh, paper in 2012. What he was trying to show is the efficacy of sonisamide. So they have a comparison uh, between sonisamide as well as carbamazepine, and the sonisamide average dose is about 300 milligram, carbamazepine dose is 600 milligram. And you can see that the efficacy is almost similar. This is monotherapy, newly diagnosed focal seizures. And the efficacies range about 85% between and similar between the both uh, regimes. And patients withdraw due to adverse drug reactions on the right side. You can see that there is not much difference between sonisamide and carbamazepine, indicating that sonisamide side effects are well tolerated. But sonisamide is daily dosing you know, as compared to other uh, previous medications. In this chart, we can see the uh, registration of the drugs in, your, in FDA uh, according to the years. The very old drugs like phenobarbital and phenytoin, they can be used on a daily basis. However, of, because of the side effect, we have not used uh, phenytoin and phenobarb that often anymore in the recent years. In fact, in the recent 10 uh, years, we hardly start someone with phenytoin or phenobarb unless they are very factory and we have no other choice. And prior to zonisamide, all the other drugs that was established are not on daily dosing. You can see that there are almost 10 uh, anti epileptic drugs developed within this past study. Uh, 30, 40 years, but none of them are actually on, can be given on a daily basis until zonisamide was established in year 20, 2000. And subsequently, the next one came about on a daily basis is parampanil, uh, which we can see in the chart here in 20, year 2012. And Malaysia, uh, parampanil was registered in 2016. 
why why we are we focusing so much on daily dosing? In fact, we know that most of the anti-epileptic drugs they are suppressing the excitations of the brain. So most patients are uh, either more or less they will experience some side effect or neuropsychiatric side effect. They will feel tired. They will feel drowsy. Uh, they will be sleepy. Depending on those, even drugs like uh, larithiracetam with very less, much less uh, side effect, the patient may still uh, experience this uh, neuropsychiatric side effect when they are on higher dose. So the beauty of daily dosing is that first it uh, can achieve a better compliance. Patient only take it once a day, and it's easier, especially during fasting month. Uh, they don't have to skip the the uh, afternoon dose and especially those who wake up late they don't have to skip the morning dose they can take it prior to their sleeps and also easier for those working in shift uh, for example those who take a bd dose and they may experience uh, sleepiness during the night shift however for daily dosing they can always change them to uh, the dose given or taken before sleeps so if they are on night shift they take it after they finish their shift uh, before they go to sleep. So it's much easier for administrations in those working in shift. And the fourth point is that they are much more steady plasma level. The level won't fluctuate as what we see in BD and CDS dosing. And this will uh, help to achieve a better efficacy. And in fact, there are less side effects. Why, why do I say about less side effects is because if they are feeling sleepy and drowsy with the medications, but they are taking it before going to bed, so they can in fact sleep with the side effects. So if they are sleepy, they just go to sleep and uh, they don't experience much sleepiness the next morning. And sometimes this sedative effect can be beneficial, especially for those who are having insomnia or having sleep problems. So how about the older medication which are on daily dosing like phenytoin and phenobarb? They are having long-term side effects because they are lipid soluble. They will stay in the body and in fact causing uh, osteoporosis, which is one of the key issues uh, with this older medication. They are having teratogenicity for uh, women with uh, pregnancy. If they are taking this medication, the teratogenicity rate risk is much higher. And the third point is that enzyme inducer, uh, they will have drug drug interactions with some other medications, for example, anti-TB or chemotherapy or anti-retroviral treatment. How about parent panel? Parent panel was also daily dose, but the uh, price is much expensive than most of the available medications in the market, uh, causing, making it are more costly and less affordable for patients who may require panel. So zonisamide is in between. Firstly, the price of zonisamide is much cheaper. It's comparable to most second-line uh, treatment, for example, lamotrigine or levetiracetam. And secondly, it's much uh, better in ease and easier in dosing regime. Zonisamide, we usually give the patients, we started with 100 milligram then titrate to 200, 300, 400, which is already the maximum. So it's easier to remember. But even for GP or for uh, general physicians or medical officers, they can remember the dose much easier. Just remember one, two, three, and four tablets uh, given at night. So they doesn't have to remember a very complex regime like lamotrigine or kinetoin titrations. And more importantly, sonisamide is not an enzyme inducer as what happened in the uh, phenytoin and phenobarbitons. Why enzyme inducer can be such a big problem? Because it is affecting the drug drug interactions with especially the anti TB drugs or antiretroviral drugs, and especially those on chemotherapy. Even those who are elderly or postmenopausal are uh, giving enzyme inducers have a higher risk of osteoporosis. And for zonisamide, there is a study comparing the bone health uh, before and after 
glucosamine, and you can see that there's no difference in their bone uh, density prior or after the sonicamide. Just for your information, sonicamide is not the only one not enzyme induces. Every teracetam and topiramates are also not an enzyme induces, but uh, the price or the benefits are slightly different between these drugs and sonicamides. This is our recent national data in Malaysia, talking about the incidence of Steven Johnson, and we are in the process of uh, uh, writing the manuscript and submitting the manuscript. One of the key uh, issues with carbamazepine and phenytoin are uh, uh, Steven Johnson or toxic epidemic uh, necrolysis. These are severe cutaneous drug reactions. And the risk is about 1% in carbamazepine and phenytoin. Even lamotrigine, the risk is also about 1%, 1 as you can see in the chart. In Malaysia alone, we have not seen any patients with Stephen Johnson secondary to uh, sonicamide. Although it was start registered in 2011, we have not seen anyone with sonicamide. Although the number may, may be small, but the risk is nearly uh, zero. So this is useful. For example, someone who has developed Steven Johnson in the past and you are worried about cross reactions, uh, sonicamide is one of the op options that you can consider. The other benefits, usually I will use it for those who are obese or those with increased uh, bone, uh, sorry, BMI. Weight loss can be a benefit. And weight loss is a common side effect in the top pyramids because of the carbonic anhydrase inhibiting uh, mechanism. And sonicamide is another group of drugs, another anti epileptic drugs with about 7% experience uh, weight loss. And besides weight loss, they also experience uh, reduced appetite. So for those who are very thin, sonicamide may not be suitable. But for those who are obese, then sonicamide will help uh, in weight loss as well. It's about 7 to 10 percent. Somnolence, and you can see here, sleepiness, they are not much different between sonicamide and carbamazepine. And the reason that I have said just now, it is because of the daily dosing and uh, the medication can be taken prior to sleep. So for those with somnolence, they will uh, sleep uh, after taking the medication and experience less. Uh, or less impact due to somnolence uh, side effect. For teratogenicity, I have tried to search for a paper uh, or pregnancy registry talking about sonicamide, uh, which is very difficult to find. The UK uh, pregnancy registry, the America uh, pregnancy registry also didn't include uh, sonicamide in their recent publications, partly because sonicamide was more used in uh, Japan and then Asia rather than uh, in, the Caucasian, in the European and American countries. But what we can find from a Cochrane uh, review is that the teratogenicity risk is only 0.28% uh, as compared to other blue color uh, percentage, which was uh, captured from the Cochrane review that I have quoted at the bottom here. In the past, we think that topiramis was safe. Uh, but in fact, one of our patients' uh, uh, baby developed cleft palate after taking topiramis during our pregnancy. And later on in the American, North American Pregnancy Registry, it, it became one of the higher risk uh, anti-epileptic drugs with uh, teratogenicity, especially cleft palates and cleft lip, lips. Whereas for zonisamide, we have not seen any cases yet. The risk is much uh, lower, but there is a concern of redu reduced uh, birth weight uh, in those taking uh, zonisamide during pregnancy. And because of that, we also try to be cautious. We try not to give zonisamide during pregnancy but if you want to quote the percentage from the Cochrane review, the risk of sonicamide is low. 
most of these uh, daily medications or newer medication, especially topiramids and parenpanil, we are very concerned about irritability. In fact, dizziness and somnolence are, are two of the problems in topiramids and parenpanil as well. But we uh, understand that zonisamide is also a common problem, but it can be resolved with a night dose or a sleep dose. But irritability is another issue. However, in the literature, what I can find is that there are only 2.2% experience irritability with these newer uh, anti-epileptic drugs as lower, much lower than topiramates, parenpanil, or even levetiracetam. So the irritability risk, especially, especially for those with autism, learning disability, or hyperactive child, uh, is the concern of irritability is, is much lower with sonisamide. So in conclusion for sonisamide, uh, I think sonisamide is one of the important development, especially when we talk about daily dosing uh, after phenytoin and phenobab, that sonisamide is the next one after almost 40 years of uh, drug development that is daily dose, can be given at uh, once, a, once daily dose. And, technic, uh, and in terms of price, it's much cheaper than some of the newer or third generation anti-epileptic drugs. And the dosing regime is much easier to remember and patient tolerate much better because of the daily dosing. For generalized epilepsy, as I informed you earlier, uh, Warpreet is a concern, especially for women, or it's contraindicated uh, if the patient requires high dose and they are on the childbearing age. I'm not too concerned about uh, teenage who are just going to school and have very low chance of being pregnant. But for those who are married and at the childbearing age, this can be a big concern. So zonisamide is another option uh, besides uh, lamotrigine and levetiracetam for women who are, and who are uh, with a childbearing age. For focal epilepsy, we know that uh, the, the carbamazepine is usually the first choice. But if carbamazepine has uh, been causing Steven Johnson, or if the patient has been tested to be positive, uh, having positive HLA-B1502, then carbamazepine is contraindicated. In fact, I'm also very cautious in giving them uh, phenytoin or lamotrigine because these two also have caused uh, reactivity and may cause Steven Johnson as well. So what will be the next choice? In the past, we used more of levetiracetam, but because of the price, uh, now Zonisamide might become one of the options that I have, I have uh, used in the patient with history of Steven Johnson or positive uh, HLAD 1502. For osteoporosis or elderly, with especially elderly with osteoporosis, we know that all the enzyme inducers we need to be we need to use them with cautious, including carbamazepine, phenytoin, and which may worsen the osteoporosis. Whereas sonisamide is not. For those with uh, anti TB uh, medications or antiretroviral medication and chemotherapy, and nowadays we are also talking about enzyme inducing for those on hypertensive drugs, cholesterol drugs or uh, anti-diabetic drugs. Therefore, uh, we usually prefer to use a medication which is not causing or not inducing the, the liver enzymes. And the last one is for those with obesity and insomnia, the side effect of zonisamide, which can cause weight loss or uh, sleepiness might be useful in this group of people, but just be we be cautious, especially if there is a, a patient having irritability or agitations. Then when we use onisamide, we, we, we need always to check the presence of irritability uh, with sonisamide, although the risk is very small. So uh, with this, I'll conclude uh, my lecture. Thank you very much.